Hey there, it's Boots Owen here. I'm on the workbench in the cellar, and this is the pump that came off I'm back up again. This Bosch WFF 2000 washing machine. I replaced it in a previous video in the fault finding series of uh, test washes on that Bosch WFF, that Bosch WFF 2000. This is a Siemens pump, it's the one that came off the Bosch. If we get some numbers there, it's a Siemens. Oh my god, there's loads of little numbers there. 2AL1502-OBG20.07, so I presume that's weak in 2007. Another number, 304707-6AB4. 220-240 volt, 50 hertz, 25 watts. 273.97013L2. Any other numbers there? 232, 6003, 60003. PPTV, is that polypropylene? Perhaps. So, let's start tearing it asunder. Got a bit better. Pull off that hose clip there, make this, stop this thing flapping about on me. The washing machine in the background is a Bosch WFF1401. It's the one that I use every day. And it's on now because that's life. Let's have a look inside. Sounds a bit gritty, but we know there's nothing in it because we checked it before. And these pumps are quite a miracle. Spinning that around, it feels normal as far as these things go. Let's get the Allen key. No, let's get the Torx screwdriver on there. Too small. I think this is T20. Yeah, T20 Torx. Four screws. Most of these pumps are pretty similar. Now, the way they work is you've got power coming in here. Let's get this cover off, if I can remember how to do it. Snap these sides off. Oh, there's the pump off as well. That's the, so this is the whole motor. Snap these two sides off. And then that rotates up and out. I think that's the drain off pump on the WFF 1401. Without damaging the coils. Just take off that. That's just a rain cover in case the machine leaks. You've got two coils of wire around a magnetic ferro, a ferro core, horseshoe shaped, you see that U shape there? We should be able to pull most of this apart. Let's get a really big screwdriver and go in here. So this just slides off. Let's put it, let's put a mark on this before we go any further. So that uh, we remember this X is on here, X there, okay. We should also remember that this one goes this way, so put an X up here too. Just for me, so in here, there's a lot of play in that, but I, there, there is often a lot of play in these things. We know that works, well, we think it works, we know something in this works intermittently, so... That's the motor. This, the AC from the electricity causes the magnetic field in this to go one way and then the other. And that causes a magnet in here to be, to, to turn. And that causes this blade, the impeller blade to turn. And that then pushes water out of this pipe here. There's not much more to it. So there's a way of opening this up. Now this, this is full of water and this is, this is how they're meant to be. You, can't, you can just about see in there that there's different colours and bubbles floating about in there when I spin it. They're kind of self-lubricating, self-cooling, so they don't, they don't really have a bearing. Now, I have broken one of these open before, and I think, if I remember, it's, I don't really care if I break it, so that's too big. I don't really care if I break it. I don't want to break. Well, I know it doesn't work, so... 
Oh, I've just pulled the blades off the splined shaft. But in fact, actually, that gives me a pretty good idea of what's gone wrong with this. So if we look down there, this is worn not into a circular shape, but into a kind of an oval shape. I think. Just trying to see, I think I can see on that shaft that there's a big step worn out of it as well, if you look right in there, you see the polished bit, and then it's kind of dull there, polished, and then dull again. I think it's completely worn off on one side, so if it gets stuck in a position magnetically, it can't get out of it. So this little bit of creamy colored plastic is obviously the seal. But I think that's all that's wrong, it's just it's just worn out. This little piece is just worn out. Like it's got, you can see the wear on the shaft. Let's try and pull out the pliers. I'll put it in the vise and see what happens. Just pull it off again. It's not. It doesn't. It could be welded in there with like a plastic weld. I'll give it one more go. The cloth is just here to catch any moisture. There we are, and the water's coming out, I can see. So I would never expect to spend much for one of these second hand, and they are just a press fit there, by the looks of things. Either that's stoved over, like that's broken on a dud now. That's stoved over. Or welded over or something. But it's a one way job now. So let's get in here and let's dry this off. Have a look at it. There's a load of wear on this shaft. I've never seen, well, I've seen lots like it, but I didn't, I wouldn't have thought something on a plastic bearing. Because that's all that is, it's just some kind of nylon or something like that. This just goes in there as a bearing. Let's have a look at the metal shaft here. We know that, of, well, it's actually, it's not, I thought it was quite a little bit oblong, but it's, it's not really. You can decide if it's circular in there or not, or if it's worn out to one side. It is worn out, it is, it's definitely not circular. But just have a look at this shaft here. You can see a marked step. Let's get a pencil on it there. So from here down to here on the bearing surface, it's all rubbed away on this side. There's like half a millimeter dug in there. All the way around until about here. From, so from here to here. So like five eighths of the way around, more than half. It's, it's completely polished off on that side. Back shaft looks okay. It's 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 worn, but it's not dead. So you'll have magnets in there. See, uh, differing poles, so that when they are inside this magnetic field, 
and the, the you know they're held in the bearing in between perfectly and then the magnetic field changes they just go zip 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 and spin around yeah so that's that's what's going on there that's the mode of failure I'd say that worn shaft and so sometimes either the magnet can get stuck to one side just that little bit or it's just that bit out of balance and that means that it just doesn't work there you go so what was that a Siemens I'm not gonna try and find it again too, ma too many numbers too many numbers a Siemens pump with those numbers on it if you press pause you can see them it's just a standard washing machine pump you can see the zigzags right down the bottom of that maybe it's just pressed in place don't know if you can see there's a little the bearing on the end is another plastic bearing and it's pressed in from the inside sorry about that washing machine noise again there's the impeller blade there's very little to it like this is the bit that does the work and this is the bit that changes the energy from electrical to motion most of the weight in that is in steel, steel laminations. Yeah. Who'd have thunk it? That's what made her fail. Thanks for watching. See you later. So there's the two coils, there's the wire running between them and a continuous strand of copper. If you wanted to make up your own little kind of show show motor, you know, an inefficient one for like a science project or something, taking one of these apart and kind of rebuilding it would be the way to go, I reckon. There's the laminations, they're staked together or riveted together and the ends staked over, very simply. Some kind of good high quality steel that I'd say. Maybe not, correct me if I'm wrong. Fancy putting an X on the end when uh, this one isn't going back together. I'll get scrap for that copper, I'd say. Let's pull it asunder. Get some scrap for it. Look how fine the wire is. Where are you gone? Where is it gone? Could be here all day. Thanks for watching. See you later.